On this episode of Show Me Renovation, a few of our favorite local makers stop by, get excited, for some fun DIY projects you can do at home. I don't think you're going to see this anywhere else in uh, Kansas City. Upstairs, the designers are putting their spin on the walls. I can knock out this wall like nobody's business. Carrie cuts in until Carrie tells me I'm not doing a good job rolling anymore. And then he kicks me out. <laughs> but check out how I just busted out this wall in 10 seconds. Way to go. So great tip is put your paint in your little pail and then put it on something above ground because otherwise you'll get off of the ladder and step in it and then you will be very unhappy and yell lots of curse words. Why do we need two trays? Why can't I just use your tray? Sure. Good work. Can I not? You can. It's a community tray. I want to. Okay. Really? Outside, Jonas and I paint the barrel vaulted ceiling sky blue. If there's no paint on your face, you're not, there's not enough paint on the roller. And I don't mean you got to be a mess, but like I'm looking, look at me. Like you don't even have paint on your glasses. I don't, did, who painted this? So when we started with this space in the dining room, there was this huge old nasty closet that was falling down. We're going to slide a cabinet in here and fill this up, but we thought before we did that, we would kind of make a time capsule to kind of commemorate what we did for this house. So we've had some of the cast and crew sign in there. We've got a picture actually that we found when we were tearing out the old closet of the former owner. And she lived here for a really long time and that's really important to us to preserve some of the history that was part of this house and to keep it for somebody else to find down the road. Later, Uncommon Supply Company brings in a custom cabinet for our dining room. We designed it kind of together with Deb. Uh, it was her inspiration from the piece that's actually on the other side of the wall. We wanted to incorporate some other elements into it that Deb had already designed into this space. So in the table, there's a live edge that's a white oak, and so we used a similar hardwood for the top of our piece. And then in the table, there are some angle iron legs that we also use to tie that together in the brackets. The color is Supernova from Benjamin Moore. We're here in the Crossroads Art District today. We're outside Vintage Edison. I think we're on the right track. We're here looking for some light fixtures for the house. I really like working with these because the uh, because they're hand-blown glass, they get these little air bubbles throughout the glass. Sure, I and, see that. Uh, the way the light diffuses through, it really creates this amazing like sparkly effect. So you'll be able to customize it to for the right size, shape, and everything to go with a custom table. So it looks looks like it's all meant to be, That's what right? I do. Okay, very good. Over at Restoration Emporium, Jeff transforms our old sink into an outdoor bar cart. What we're doing today is we're working on an old sink and cabinet that came out of a house. And we're really excited about this. The top was in perfect condition. The cabinet part of it, what we've decided to do is put casters on it. So I built a frame for it into the cabinet. So it's nice and sturdy. And the cool part about this is I'm taking things that I have that were laying around. Even things that Chrissy, my wife, does not know that I have laying around. And that's what I love about whenever you're refinishing furniture. I know it sounds weird, but it talks to you. It let you know what it wants to be in its second life. Then it's time to bring some life back to the outdoors. So as we set these in here, we're sticking with that traditional style of the bricks leaned at a 45. We'll also be using some of the window grates that used to be on the windows, kind of the security bars. They've got some great styling to them, so we're actually gonna use them as kind of a trellis used along that side for either privacy or just for some aesthetic value. 
when you dig your holes two to three times the size of the pot with a slight angle to the side. You want to stick with as much of the existing soil as you can and not put too much amendment. That can actually cause the plants to keep their roots in the amended soil because they don't like what's outside of that. When we started cleaning up on this side, we noticed that a lot of the ground cover was uh, a decorative gravel. There's a spot in the back that actually um, was an existing path that's kind of been beaten down and needs a little bit of reviving. So we're going to use this decorative gravel back there to bring a little bit of life back to it. This should be a great cover. So when Erin reached out to us for this project, she told us that we had this stairway in the entry here. Abby had a great idea to do sort of a path within a path. The first thing that came to my mind was the Christopher S. Bond Bridge. It's just kind of this welcoming to Kansas City feel. So we got in the car and drove up and down the bridge a couple times. We took it down to Shawnee Copy Center and they were able to print it out on a large format for us. So anyone could do this. For design purposes, if you ever want to change it out, it's a very affordable DIY project to just take it off and do something else. So in the girls' room, we thought it'd be fun to put a wall hanging out that had a little bit of dimension, a little bit of whimsy and femininity. I asked Audrey from Oh So Lovely Blog to help me out. She's a great DIYer and she is here to show us a really fun and easy project. The supplies you're going to need are um, some kind of twine. Okay. The nat natural look is really pretty, I think, for the look you're going for this room. Definitely. And then a little pair of wire cutters, because some of the faux flowers have wire in them. Um, okay. Faux flowers, a hot glue gun, and some scissors, and that's, that's it. And that's all yeah. we need. We're going to want to have like, probably about seven or eight staggering strands of twine with flowers hanging from them. The problem with this closet is it's got a window on one of the walls, so you can't just do a closet rod across here. There was just a shelf and it had a closet rod that was diagonal here. You're not going to hang anything for the first foot of that, so you had this closet where you had maybe two feet of hanging, maybe. We came up with a kind of cool little custom shelf. I like her glove. Um, Anybody can do this. You can cut this with a jigsaw, and once you've got your template, then you can just knock them all out one after the other. I had an epiphany in the shower. Carpet tile area rug. Boom. They come in a million different patterns. They're super fun. The great thing about these is if little Timmy runs in and spills red wine all over one of your carpet tiles. Timmy doesn't have red wine. It comes over the glass of red wine. <laughs> oh, oh yes. Yes. The point is, is that then you can take this and replace it with another piece and you don't have to take out the entire rug, dry clean it, etc. Dustin is back and ready to install the custom mantle. So often we have to think about how to add character to walls. And I'm a big fan of coming up with ideas that you can live past when you get bored with it. So that's when vinyl tape comes in handy. I'm going to do a modern kind of abstract linear moment on the walls. Vinyl tape you can buy in all different widths, all different colors. So all you need is the vinyl tape, a pair of scissors and some kind of squeegee thing to make sure it comes down. The reason why I like doing this kind of pattern is because you don't have to measure out, you don't have to think, and it's still gonna look cool. It's a win-win. Next time, designers load in, everything should tell a story, and we turn this house back into a home. This house has been waiting for me. So since this used to be, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> on a vinyl. Pause. <laughs> Stop looking at me. <laughs> In my head, if you knew what was going on, you'd be worried for me.